I would like to continue talking about copyright by talking about fair use. Most importantly, fair use is a defense. It's not a right. So if you do something that you think is covered by fair use, ultimately a judge will have to decide whether or not your use is actually fair use. Copyright is defined in the Constitution, and a copyright holder has ex certain exclusive rights. So if I, as a teacher, want to make a copy of a copyright-protected work so that I can use that material in my classroom, technically, I would have to negotiate with the holder of the copyright in order to make one copy of a protected work. Fortunately, fair use eliminates the need for me to have to negotiate to make one copy of anything that's protected by copyright. Fair use went into law in 1976, and it is a limited exception to those exclusive rights that are held by the owner of a copyrighted work. There are certain times, specifically if I'm going to do commentary, use it for education or criticism or parody, I am permitted to make a copy without negotiating that copy with the copyright holder. But remember, it is a defense, not a right. So even if I'm, I think what I'm doing is fair use, the copyright holder can take me to court and dispute the fact that I'm violating his or her copyright. When that happens, a judge will look at four factors to determine if my use is fair use. And only a judge can decide this. Here are the four factors. The first factor is exactly what is the purpose of my copy. If I'm making a copy of something so that I can use it in, in an educational lesson, it's probably fair use. If I'm making a copy to try to make money from it, that's probably not fair use. Depending on the kind of thing I copy, fair use may or may not apply. Let's say I have a book that has every score from every baseball game ever played. That is a book of facts. Facts are not protected by copyright. So if I copied it, it would be more likely that that copy would be protected by fair use. However, if it's a fictitious creative story like Casey at the Bat, and I made a copy of that story, it probably would not be protected by copyright. The amount that I copy is also important. There's no hard and fast rule that says a percentage or anything like that. In general, if I copy a small amount, it is more protected than if I copy a large amount or the whole thing. The last and most important factor is how will my copy affect the copyright holder's ability to make money? Let's say I'm taking an art class that has this textbook. And instead of buying this textbook, I go to the library, I check it out, and I make a copy. In essence, my copying that book has prevented the owner of the copyright from making money from my purchase of the book. In that case, it would not be protected by fair use. I would lose that court case. So fair use is very complicated. Lots of teachers think just because I'm a teacher, everything applies. But those four factors are critical which is why I recommend you always use reduced copyright material. I'll talk about that tomorrow.